Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I am filling in for Belinda today. Um, just going over some announcements. Um, first of all, Pastor Scott would like to have a fish fry sometime this year. I'm not sure if it'll be later this summer or early in the fall. But anyone who is out fishing and you want to freeze fish for the fish fry, um, the more we have, the, um, the more we'll have to eat. So if you are out fishing and like to donate um, any of your fish, um, go ahead and do that. As, as the year goes on, we'll designate a, a date so then we can let everyone know for sure. So next weekend, we will have church here on July 2nd. But the following week, two weeks from now, July 6th through the 9th, we will have Jesus Fest down um, in, in Niles. Yep, in Niles. Um, the church service will be outside. We are combining the services with our church and with uh, Pastor Whitaker's um, church. So if you're a few minutes late getting there, um, that's perfectly fine. We'd love to see everyone down there July 6th through the 9th for the church service and throughout the whole entire weekend. Um, with that being said, our church is going to have um, a few tables set up during that weekend. Right now, we are going to have um, prairie dogs and popcorn um, for sale. And so anyone that would like to help out with that, um, either see myself, Belinda or um, Tanya. Belinda and Tanya will be back next week. So if you are wanting to help out and you haven't had a chance to sign up, please feel free to do that. On August 12th, we um, are going to be at the Buchanan Farmers Market having a bake sale as a fundraiser for the church. So anything that you would like to make for this bake sale, in the past, we've always done it in September. This year, we're going to do it August 12th. So any items you want to bake, or if you want to even bake pies, we will be selling those at the Farmer's Market in Buchanan. Um, another thing in August, um, I was just shared with, um, with my friend over the weekend. Keep this date in mind, too, August 26th. Last year, there were a few of us from our church that went to Christ Lutheran Church in Stevensville, and there was an outside concert with two, three singers, Christian singers. Well, the, the main act for that evening is Big Daddy Weave, and his concert will start at 8.30. Um, I was just shared just before church started um, what those ticket, the price tickets are, and I honestly, I didn't have time to find what that price is, but um, some of us um, had gone last year, and it was a beautiful evening. I just could not believe the hundreds, I mean hundreds of people that were at this concert, and it was just, it, it was fabulous. It really was. We sat outside, out, out in the lawn, just like we do for our services, and people brought lawn chairs, people brought uh, blankets. There were several vendors there too. So I think the first act, if I remember right, starts at 4.30 or 5.30. So, uh, but anyway, keep that date in mind as well. Uh, one more date, um, July 22nd and 23rd. July 22nd is for the kids. Um, we are planning a overnight stay for the kids to come and we're going to do kind of like a Bible study and of course have some fun. Um, I would love it if the kids felt comfortable enough to spend the night. If they don't, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then the next day on Saturday, we will plan, we're planning a family picnic. 
with a lot of fun family fun activities along with the meal. So just to give, I know I've given you a lot of dates, but I just wanted to give you something to think about as the summer moves on. Are there any other announcements that maybe I missed? None? All right. Any uh, prayer concerns? Yes, Chris? Uh, my mom last night had issues on the, uh, as much as the nurse told me that she had a little bit of fluid building up in her lungs. Okay. She had issues breathing last night. Okay. And uh, which hospital is she at? St. Joe. St. Joe. Okay. Okay. Okay, St. Joe, Michigan. Okay. Any other prayers or joys? This back here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Me and Kim were with my boys at uh, Gus's house. The boys are not going to the church. He felt bad. They're not going. Sorry. He felt bad because the boys called that they were going to go, and then they weren't able to come. Okay. Well, you prayers for them. Yep, you know what, and prayers for Aiden and Owen, especially, I mean, they, I know they love coming here, they're not always able to come, but when they are, we enjoy having them here, so, yes, we'll pray that they're able to come here next weekend or the following weekend. They call me about 8 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Any, any uh, other prayers or concerns? Um, I've got a joy. All right. Um, this was all God helping me, okay? But I was able to share um, with Jesus, her with Jesus, and um, it was just a wonderful experience. Praise God on that. Praise God. Sharon? I praise God for the refreshing rain. We didn't get much, but there's more coming, and we really need it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I got one more. Okay, Chris. I got to praise that my wife gets to do uh, her thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> joys or concerns, we'll go ahead and, and go to a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for all the beautiful people that have come to praise you and to spend time as a church family. We thank you for all of the joys that you have given us in our lives. We have prayer concerns for healing. We have prayer concerns for the young boys to be able to come back to church. And I know that will happen in the near future. Lord, we just thank you each and every day for all the many blessings you have given us. Thank you for allowing us to come together today after church. And I know to have a beautiful potluck and to not just to enjoy each other's food, but to also enjoy each other's company. I pray that the service, whether in music and in Karen's message, touches our lives, touches our hearts, and draws us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody ready? Yep. Sing for the glory of God. One, two, three.
gives up, it never runs out of me. Oh, your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out of me. Oh, your love. Amen. for the four foot and under seven. Sometimes 
our decisions, we really want to make them because we think it's a good decision, but we need to rely on God's strength and also trusting God that he knows truly what's right for us. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read from the Bible. It's 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 through 10. Now, in this section, Paul is um, having temptations from Satan, okay? And this is what God is telling him to handle the temptations from Satan. He says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. So even though Paul may feel that he is weak at times, what God is saying to him is that you just ask me, ask me for your, ask me for strength, and my strength will get you through. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So even though Paul may feel that his weaknesses, when he is weak, that it may be difficult, but he's come to realize that when he follows his Father, his Heavenly Father, there is nothing that the both of them can't conquer. All right, so now we're going to pray, but we're going to stand up, okay? We're going to stand up. Can you hold the dumbbell in one hand, and you and I are going to hold hands in the other hand, okay, as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for Evelyn being here and for her father bringing her here. She truly, truly is such a delight to this church. She has so much to offer. Her smile, her love for you, her passion to be kind to everyone she meets. Dear Heavenly Father, when she has trouble either making a decision or maybe even when things that come into her life that bring her sadness, give her the strength to turn to you to help her be strong and to help her follow the way you are wanting her to live that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen! Let me be full, 
let, let me be empty. Let, let me have all things. Let, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. Amen. That's always a tough one because when you hear so be it, you want to end because so, amen means so be it. Fake smile on each day. As life went on each day, 
I would fall into a deeper, fall into that mow hole, deeper and bigger than that rabbit hole they call. Days I wasn't working, I would lay in bed, cry myself to sleep so badly, till my eyes burned, slowly shutting everyone off, even my husband, my roommate, my sister, and my family called me. They tried to cheer me up, but there was nothing they could do, because the person that I wanted the most don't have visiting hours, don't have a cell phone. So what can you do when the person you want the most can't see. I did this for months. Most of the family wasn't there when I needed them the most. I felt I was alone, even though I wasn't. I was mad. I didn't understand why God took my best friend, one who went everywhere with me. I felt like this for days. Days turned to months, months turned into years, till the year 2022. I knew I had enough of things that dealing with didn't help. It didn't help dealing with this one. I dealt with another problem, my headaches. That I had even before my mom passed in. So I made an appointment with my family doctor, and I did. That day came, and he scheduled an MRI of my whole head. So now just as the wait, tell you receive it and load it over. Well, a few days passed, and his nurse called and told me, he was referring to a neurosurgeon. I asked her, did you find something? And her reply was, all I could say in that moment, my heart sunk. They couldn't tell me anything. I had that gut feeling something's really bad wrong. And you know, when you do with your gut feeling, you know, it's not right. So I said in that moment, I wanted something. I had that gut, so now we had to go to wait for that referral to go through and get it going for a few days. Later they called me and we got that appointment set. Well, we had to wait till it was time to go in that appointment. At this time, I haven't told no one, but my husband, Chris, as he was there to hear what I had heard. Well, a few weeks passed and it was time to go to see the neurosurgeon. So we went and did all you have to do for your appointment visit and waited to get all called back. And then before we know it, I had to got called back to her room. Nurse did all she had to do before Doc came in. And now for the Doc to come in. He came in and got the MRI popped up. And after he did, he said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but on the right side of your brain, you have a brain tumor. My reply, what? No way. No way. This this isn't true. It sh it can't be me. Well, it was. It wasn't a big one, but it wasn't a small one. He couldn't tell what a battle was until where or if he opened it up to take a look. After he told me that, he said, "Here's your choices. Each had risk as many major surgeries does. So here's my choice." One, leave it alone and see how it does. Or for girls, just let Mother Nature take its course. Two, have it removed and set the risk goes with it. Well, we replied to, I don't normally talk about surgery, but since it's causing issues, we have to. He gave us some time while he came back to the room, and we did. Each choice was not good either way, but at least having it removed Chances I still would have more time to live and live in it there. So he came back and asked what I decided. And I choose to have it removed, as it was always to cause me problems already. So he decided, he said, all right, we get everything set up and call when the insurance goes through. Do you know how insurances are? They, they don't rush. They take their time. Then I have to wait and have the date set. Mark like, okie dokie, I'll see you soon. So as we was leaving, we got in the car and I just lost it. 
I was so scared. I didn't understand why me. So now I have to tell everyone. Even my work, most said, okay, most said, most was scared. As I was, I cried. Some didn't take it seriously. Some didn't really care at all. They was like, oh, you go in there and you be home the next day. I don't know what kind of surgery they're thinking, but brain surgery, you don't go home in one day. So now it's time to tell everyone, and I did. So this was June. So the next few months, I enjoyed the best I could do with dealing with so much as I was. Well, June passed, July come, and I got the call for the day of my surgery, August 4th, 2022, at 7 a.m. in County Sioux. I had to be there. So days go by, I took care of what I could do in that time frame before I knew it. It was the day before my surgery. I did the prep I had to get done, just chilled at home and just be a slug on the couch. But why not? I went to bed and took that long road. As you know, you're having a major surgery, trying to take it all in. I knew I kind of had that feeling this might be the last time I get to drive for a little while, so I told my husband. I'll drive. Well, we drive up there and we get in there, checked in, do all you gotta do, and they call me back. So I had to get all that ready, you know, get half naked and put that part up. Okay, I'm on. I needed two hours and I I felt like my life will change. Well, next thing I knew, it was time. That moment where you have your loved one there and you have to have your few last words because no one knows the outcome. No one knows how it's going to be. So I said, I want to see Christopher before I go. So before I went back, I said, I love you. And I kissed him. And I gave him a hug. And I said, I know this is hard. But you gotta hang in there. You're strong, because look at the woman you have. You can't get no stronger than that. <laughs> well, it was time. I had to go to the surgery room. And when I got back there, I had to switch beds. And they put me on this metal bed that make your buck cheeks cold. Well, the biggest room I've ever seen, so many people in there, so many, I can't even tell you how many there was, it was such a big, it was bigger than this room. I lay down and I had to spread my arms out and told me count. Don't ask me how far I counted, I can't tell you, I don't, I don't think I made it past two. <laughs> and that day, the next thing I know, I'm being talked to by someone saying, grab my hand. It was weird. So I did. I grabbed their hand and it ached like this. And it was a soft touch. That moment didn't click. I said, I know that hand. <coughs> and it was my mom. She grabbed it because she had that soft, you know, that baby skin. Well, I didn't know what was going on. It, it was a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling that you cannot explain. As I did that, before I, I felt different. like I went all the way, I got halfway. I stood up like halfway up. I, 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 I've never had this before, so I can't even tell you. So I got halfway up and I looked, I was like, <coughs> How can I be halfway up? And my body's still there. You know? I was like, oh. So I turned around and I seen, as I was gradually going up, before I go up, most do not know me. I like medical stuff, the body parts and seeing, you know, all that kind of gooey stuff. 
Well, I wanted to before I left. I looked and I looked back and I could see my head open and my head in this weird thing they put in there so your body don't move. And when your head was open, I can see the inside. I see just blood. And I was like, mmm. And before I knew it, I rose up all the way. And I, I, I was just like, I felt like I was floating. But I couldn't explain it. It felt like, like a cloud in the sky. No weight, but just like air, like a butterfly flying. You cannot hear them, but you can see them. Well, I left, and lo and behold, before I knew it, I seen this light. It's a weird light, brighter than the sun. Well, no one had to tell me. I knew I had to go through that light. Yes, normally you don't do something like this. So I, you know, did what I was told without being told. I went through the light was at me and I went to the spot where me and my mom always went. It was Silver Beach at the finish by the water. That moment I will never forget. There she was, my mom. I said, Mom? She said, Karen, I gave her that biggest hug. And my mom was not a hugger, but she took it. And I smiled. I smiled, the biggest smile I could ever give anyone. I said, oh, I miss you. She said, I miss you. I miss all my kids. I said, I love you, Mom. She said, I love you too, Karen. Never forget that. As we began to do what we always do, without talking, it seemed like years before I knew it, I seen all these people started coming up. Some people I've never met before in my life. And we was in this little circle, like our grandma always does, and we just chit chat for a little bit. And it was like, wow, did time go back? This didn't feel real. As I was joining, seeing my mom, and again she told me, Karen, I know you want to stay, but you cannot stay at this moment. I begged her, please mom, let me stay. I miss you too much. Life is not the same without you. But she said, it's now your time. And soon you will have to go back. In that moment, I just took in what time I had. And I have never seen my mom somewhere alive. And I said that she's not a pain. She was like her young self, wearing them old timey button up shirts like elderly people wear. Me and Alfred like this and her goofy shoes. She was just shining so bright. Everybody around her. It, it was a moment most has experience. Well, before I know it, I heard a loud thug sound. And I woke up to being wheeled to the elevator by the nurse, hitting the side of the elevator. And then I knew I'm back home. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. So I closed my eyes again and I woke up the next day being told I'm having an MRI and I went, was getting done in the middle and I felt funny, but I couldn't really tell anyone. Well, next thing I know, I was being rushed back to where I was in. I remember I couldn't move, talk, nothing, but I can hear them talking to me. 
Okay, I couldn't respond, but I heard a voice that I know. My husband first heard. But I couldn't say nothing to him. He said, babe, come back to me. Come back to me. Babe, please come back to me. I cannot afford to lose you. Then here in the town, he asked to leave the room. They were doing all kinds of things. I didn't feel them, but in my mind, I could hear them, but nothing. As hours went on, I was told it was over five hours. Nothing they were doing fixing it. And I didn't know this until they told me. But I didn't want to tell them because I don't want them thinking I'm and put me in a nut house. And as they was fixing to eat a baby, all of a sudden my eyes opened. And I opened my eyes and I'm trying to remember who was who, where I was, and after that, my mind and body was drained. I slept. I slept for almost four days. So I started to be aware and wake more. Slowly I started moving and talking, but not clearly. I was talking like I was a kindergartner. And still, on the fourth day, Eric me and everybody started to come and work with me. The rallies in half of my face was numb, all through here, and even inside of my throat. Some eating normal food was out of the question. Five to six days came, and they was helping me to learn to eat pure food. And if you haven't ate that, it's worse than baby food. <laughs> but I didn't complain because I still had a chance to trade because it could be worse, and I couldn't be doing it. So they pure the food because solid foods I couldn't swallow. But yet, every time I tried to, I choked on it, and. They say, no, just spit it out, spit it out. Trying to spit something out that you don't even know how to is hard. Well, so they said, before I go home, I have to learn to walk and move more than I was. So rehab, I did. On the sixth day, I had to be away. So they said, you're going to be going to rehab about two weeks to help you. Yes, I still had to learn a lot of things again. So they had to wait till the insurance company again to make sure everything is taken care of because, you know, they can't be out that money. Well, it was around 10 o'clock and they finally got a room. So they got me down to rehab. And I looked in this rehab, it looked like, it didn't look like a rehab at all. It looked like a psych ward. It, I was nervous to all get out. I, I was scared. Well, they said, if you had enough day, you had enough for one day, so in the morning, you can start a rehab. So you can have a good night's sleep. I tried that. I told them I would try, but I can't guarantee it because I have no idea where I'm at. And familiar areas that I do not know, I took a lot on me. So the next day came and I started rehab. And by God's grace, they said, Can you walk? I said, I don't know, but I could try. The next thing you know, I'm walking down to the rehab place with the person there in case I crawl. And they looked at me like they seen a ghost. Well, I did what I asked, and they said, wow, it is unbelievable what I did in less than a day. They said, I have never seen someone so determined and so just, it's a miracle. I said, well, I used to say it's God's will, but I changed it to God's plan because no one knows what his plan is. 
So, next thing I know, I did my last rehab session, and they said, well, I'm going to talk to everyone on the team. We're going to see, because there's no use that you stay here. I think there's a chance you may be going home. I said, what? I thought I'd have to be here for two weeks. He goes, why be here for two weeks and you don't need to be? You did more in just a short time than most people did in years. I said, well, it's called determination and willpower. Mm -hmm. So if I made it this far, why quit? <coughs> but I cannot lie, quitting was on my mind. It was a lot. So they said, well, I said, the greatest feeling ever, I'm going home. So I got a hold of my husband and I said, let's go, we're going home. So he had to get our stuff ready. I said, well, you got 30 minutes or I'm walking to you. He said, oh, you can't do that. I said, don't tell me I can't. I said, because I can and I will. So they said before I left that I would have to be doing outpatient to make sure that I'm capable of doing outside. Well, before I started that, I had to heal more so I don't push myself. Plus, I wanted the stitches out. So I waited until my stitches were removed. And as they were taking them in, I counted 36 of them. <coughs> well, it was time. They said that I could start a rehab, an outpatient. I did. I did it for four, almost five weeks. I did finish, and I graduated from it, but it helped me for not just doing that. I did a lot at home. I said, I cannot sit here on this couch and be a couch potato. That is not me. I said, I have to get up and do it. So, I did what I was doing at rehab. I did at home. And they're like, wow, I have never seen this. I said, you know what? I can't say I've never heard that before because I've heard it this whole time. So, I did some things, but it took me some days. And I took breaks in between. Because doing all that stuff, you had to do it and boy. Did it take a lot out of you? Well, then I started having episodes. Episodes I call seizures. And, you know, they get worse, and I had to leave my house in an ambulance. Because nobody knows what was going on. So they had to wait and to get my doctor and I guess they said that my medicines that I were on was too low so they had upped. So here I go again, home. And this was my new normal until I realized I was ready to be saved. And then my husband's mom, baby, told me about a rummage cell that this church was happening last year. So me and Chris went and I said, then I met Pastor Scott. Boy, was he a lifesaver. We chit chatted for some time and got to me saying, I always wanted to be saved. He said, I cannot remember the exact words, but he asked me a question. And he knew in my heart, I was in the right place. He finally asked me, do you want to be saved tomorrow? I said, do I? I said, oh, yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. So that Sunday, November, after church, it happened. I got saved right here in this church and felt something that I didn't know exist. So other than that other that day, I went and when I got good, because that's how I found my second home and my family. And I'm talking about you guys. Well, after that, I knew I had to have a second circle to replace what they took out from my skull. 
And why I say that is the brain tumor he took out was attached to my skull. And the size of the skull he took out is the size of your hand. He wanted to, to keep it, but he didn't want to take a chance of putting that back in and have to go through that all over again. I said, just take it out. Do it, you know. So I said, I had one request before I had my second surgery. I asked him, please not be around Thanksgiving and Christmas. God, ask me why. I said, I don't want to be home. She was like, I don't want to be in this hospital staring at four walls. Well, I did just that. I did. I do it Thanksgiving at home. It was just me and my husband, our fur girls, which I use I call our fur babies, and our roommate. I cooked more than what we could share, but I was just so happy. Boy, you couldn't take that smile on my face. Well, we enjoyed that day, and we got stuffed, and we felt, you know how that turkey goes. Well, here comes Christmas. I didn't get the call yet, so Christmas came. And most of them know, I had three wishes. Every birthday, I always think when my mom passed away. One is to see her again. Two, have a good Thanksgiving that is truly meant to be celebrated. And three, to have snow on Christmas. Because Christmas is not Christmas if it don't snow. And boy, did it snow. So if you're mad, you can blame me because I wish for it. Mm -hmm. And I was happy as go lucky. Well, here comes after Christmas. I get the call. It was that time to have the second surgery. And we got it set. January 26, 2023. I would have had it done way before then, but we had a lot of complications and it just kept on getting postponed. So, you, know, you can't rush something if it's not meant to be. I said, well, God, when it's meant to be, it will happen. Well, it wasn't nearly bad as the first one. It got time, and I had my surgery. And after I woke up, back in the same place I started, the NICU. But this time, it was a little different. I kept my face up on feeling weird. Like, half of my face looked like I got beat up. I mean, beat up. It was swelled and bruised. Well, about after five days, they told me I could go home. And I went home. I didn't want to go nowhere because I didn't. I was so ashamed to look in the way I did. I don't want people to see it. I don't want people to see it. They Christopher would beat me up because they would have knocked him silly. And they would have believed me. Well, after several days, about seven days later, I got my stitches removed. And I got sent back home. And it was still slow. And I got down. Two weeks passed. And I asked her, can we go to church? Mom, he said, you sure? I said, that's a stupid question to ask somebody. So I went to church. And boy, when I entered the room, it looked like y'all see the ghost. Everyone was shocked and speechless as fast as I could turn. They just asked me, I'm really surprised you came back as fast as you did. I said, why not? By God's grace, I'm still here, so why not thank him the best possible way I can? I'm doing this home. Well, by thanking God, I went to church because I wanted to thank God for the second chance. 
Because before all this happened, I didn't enjoy the simple things like I do now. So all the simple things happened, I enjoyed it. Like me finally getting a little ponytail. Mm -hmm. Boy, it took me 10 months to get it, and I was happy about that ponytail. It felt like I won a million dollars. I was so happy. I was like, I was so happy. I was like, can you see? I took it down. I was like, see that flip? I was like, I'm getting my hair back. They were like, it's just hair. I was like, to you, to me. It's everything. Well, that's when I got another change came. My God, my second godsend, name Michelle. She talked me about day floors weekend 140. At first, it seemed like something like a cult. You know, you, you don't hear, oh, we always have a doubt, just like, oh, should we go, should I go? But I said, heck with it, and I agreed. So I sent what I needed to do to save my spot. <clears throat> that made Michelle smile the brightest I've ever seen me in a so days and months passed, and it was time to attend my weekend. To be honest, I was happy going. This is the first time packing a bag, and it wasn't for our hospital stay. That meant a lot. And it happened. My life-changing moment. When I got that feeling, I always wanted. That feeling is, I can't tell you too much, because I want some people may want to go to day cars and they can feel what I feel. And that is when I really found Jesus. And I felt him more than I have ever did. I always wanted to have an empty heart. Get all that pain that I have and all my years and my younger days. Even when I was a kid. I won't go down that because that would be a whole new book. Well, I got all that hatred, all that stuff that brings you down, all that negative out of my heart. It emptied it. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, it filled up with a feeling that I could never explain. It was so much peace and love. It was like, wow. Wow, I believe a new me, a new life. But well, time passes and it's time to go home. As I went home, I didn't put nothing away, yet I was showered and washed. It felt like I had a shower because it just felt like getting that old off me. So I could really enjoy this new life. And I did just that. After I showered and washed the old away, I went to bed, and when I woke up, I was really a brand new person. I have, I have never felt more alive than I ever had in my entire life. That trip made me more closer to Jesus than I ever been. And that, I'm beyond grateful for Jesus. Not giving up on me when I did to him, times I did. So each good, bad times, I think, God for allowing me to enjoy it when I do. Because if he gave up on me when I did him, I wouldn't be here to tell him how my testimony came. But in the back of my mind, I still had that question. Why did God save me when he didn't have to? So one day, I was taking a shower. I used to take showers because that was the closest I get to Jesus. And then I asked that question, I always want an answer. And I got my answer. God said, my child, why would I let my brightest star, a taller than a star, go? So now, go so when I can guide people to see and believe what you believe. So, you're saying I'm your lighthouse? I said, my child, you're right. To guide people and to help people. So now, I have an end to you. 
as the answer as I asked. He answered. He talked to me. And that moment when he talked to me, I screamed, Oh my lantern, oh my lantern. And here comes my husband. He come running. What's wrong? What's wrong? I said, God just talked to me. God really talked to me. He said, Babe, you changed. We, we got a path that is planned for you, and you're finally getting the answers that you always wanted. Well, my goal through this storm I went through is to encourage others to stand tall and bright through their storms and know you're never alone. <clears throat> Last thing I want to say is there are some very special people here that I personally want to thank. Without them and their guidance, I wouldn't have got the, the help to get the peace that I have now, to know for their due. One, thank you to my husband, Chris, for being there and never giving up on me, for giving me that courage and strength that I needed the most. Thank you. Two, thank you, Pastor Scott, for allowing following your heart and following God's word for saving me. Taking the time to do so means more to me than you will ever know. I say the best for last, Michelle. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing and telling me about your players, big words, for telling me about it. For you, you are my hero to my eyes, a person, many, a martyr. You have done so much for me. You will never know. Thank you. Thank you more. Thank you a lot. I truly love you dearly. Words cannot compare to how I truly feel. Thank you. And last but not least, thank you to each and everyone here today for listening and being a big accomplishment in my life. Know that God loves you and so do I. And thank you also to my support team. Prayers that we sent Jesus for me. And I also want to thank each and every one of you that prayed. The prayers did not go unnoticed. They were heard. Every word. Thank you again. And God bless. Now one thing left before I have to get out of here. It's a sculpture that you see right above the message, God's will. Psalms 23, 4 describes my life at the beginning. And I will read it to you. Yeah, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For though art with me, the rod, the staff that comfort me. Boy, that did tell my life at the beginning. But this is my life now. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give unto you. Let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to leave you at that. Thank you. Please stand.
morning here at Porch Prairie, isn't it? Now we know it Karen better, but you know what you get from that is uh, God is with us all the time. And you know, the saying that we have, I think there's a sign in the office now, right? God is good, and you all say all the time, and all the time, God is good. And so, and I'll just remind you, of those of you that aren't here every week, and we're surrounded by corn and agriculture, right? I mean, it's a very interesting church here because we're surrounded by things growing and then we have the graveyard out there. Some of those gravestones uh, tell you that they were Civil War veterans. So, uh, it's, so we have growth. And I remind you, this is a reminder that we're going to heaven with the tombstones, but we're always, always growing as Christians, right? Always listening to the Spirit. Uh, each one of us, because the Bible uses us as an example, that God is a river, and we are in the river. The beautiful thing about a river is it's ever-changing, amen? And so the prayer each and every week is to grow closer to God through love, through evolution of our hearts and our minds, and always back to the Shema, love God with all your heart, soul, and might. And so uh, we had a request, kind of, Lisa uh, mentioned we didn't do Lord's Prayer, just for those of you that question that. Uh, we do it as a liturgy now, so not every week, but we'll do it today because Lisa's here. And so we have our closing prayers, sing our song. I'll try to remember to bless the food, so just say, God bless our food. And then stick around and have a uh, true communion to spend time with each other and talk with each other. So let's bow our heads for our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath morning that you have given us this time, this place, these loving hearts, this family. Uh, may you place into our hearts where you will take us, where you uh, reveal to us how you want us to live our lives, to be as Christ-like as possible, uh, to fill us with your mercy, your grace, and your love. We know that uh, many people here need healings, uh, relationships, bodies, uh, and once again, we raise up Vivian, uh, that her lung uh, heals up and she comes back to us safely. We raise up Vic, I mean Rick, uh, that he is doing better. And we just know that you're with us, continue to move in this congregation, that all that we do is led by you, that all that we do and say glorifies your holy name. And once again, we just give you all the praise, all the glory, bless this food to our bodies, in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave his all, that we may have all. And all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. Amen. Now we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.